Welcome to Roaches to Wrenches. It's your boy Stax. This episode will be a recap of the disastrous experience I had last summer rebuilding a VQ35DE. This was actually my first, but most likely also my last time rebuilding an engine. So, the story began in late June of 2021 when I saw an ad for a 2006 G35 coupe with 160,000 miles and rod knock. There was no other information besides that in the ad. I figured I'd go check it out as it would be an interesting project. Since the guy was asking just under three grand, I assumed it had the rev up engine and the 6MT, but upon seeing the car in person, it was immediately evident the seller was asking way too much. The car was not as described. There was a little rust starting to form on the rear quarters. The wheels were plasti dipped uh, and had paint underneath that plasti dip, which wouldn't come off as I found out later. Um, ended up having to paint those wheels chrome. It had a little over 170,000, not 160,000 miles. Uh, it had been sitting at a shop for a couple months, so the brakes were rusted. And of course, the biggest letdown of all, uh, it was just a regular non-rev up automatic car. Needless to say, everything in my head was telling me to run as far from this one as possible. I never heard the engine run, wire and harness was unplugged, intake manifold was unbolted. The guy I bought the car from was an asshole. Uh, first of all, the car wasn't as described as stated previously. Secondly, when I pointed out these issues, there was almost no acknowledgement whatsoever. Oh, it's not that bad. That's nothing. It'll buff out. You know what I mean? Like, and I get it. He was trying to get the car sold, but you got to have some accountability. Ultimately, the responsibility falls on my own head. This was one of the stupidest car buying decisions I have ever made. I ended up buying this car for $1,800. Once I paid the guy and got the title, he just hopped on his motorcycle and rode off into the sunset. Didn't care to help me with anything. Right after he left, I realized the keys were missing along with one of the license plates. To make a long story short, we text back and forth. He's always reluctant to respond. He sends me on this wild goose chase that amounted to nothing tells me he's gonna check his garage nada nothing never even fucking responds did i mention this guy was an asshole uh, <laughs> again again the responsibility falls on my own head it was tremendously idiotic to buy a car without keys i know even though this happened several months ago the situation still chooches my ass when I think about it. But anyway, I ended up paying a locksmith that day $120 to make a key so we could get the car on a flatbed and finally get the show on the road. So from the very beginning, I decided I was going to try and rebuild this engine. Figured instead of paying $1,500 for a replacement engine, I just spend a few hundred on a rebuild kit and some other parts. Then after a few weeks, I'd have a sweet daily driver. Well, as I'm sure you've guessed by now, things didn't work out that way. I pulled the engine, drained the oil, which had a very high viscosity, almost like glue. So obviously the last guy threw in some Lucas oil thinking it would buy him some time. That didn't work, obviously. Upon removing the lower and upper oil pans, it was evident. Uh, the car was driven for a relatively long time after the rod knock started as there was a significant amount of large metal shavings everywhere. The bottom end was completely destroyed. All the bearings had disintegrated. The rod bearing for cylinder six no longer existed. Every single bearing had actually spun. So the crankshaft and all the connecting rods were junk. The only value they had was scrap metal. At this point, anyone with common sense would have just cut their losses thrown in a used engine and be done with it. But not me, not me. I was committed. I ordered a rebuild kit, new crankshaft, used connecting rods, new timing chain, oil pump, and the rear main seal. I cleaned up the engine block, honed out the cylinders. And to be honest, there was so much vertical scoring in the cylinders, they needed to be bored 20 over, but I didn't want to spend the money. It is what it was. The pistons were reused and 
reinstalled with new rings. Uh, the ring gaps were within spec. The bottom end went back together without any trouble. I used plastic gauge and the bearing clearances were all within spec. The rest of the engine reassembly went on without issue. The rebuild kit came with all new gaskets, so everything had fresh seals. And after bolting on the accessories and connecting the wiring harness, I put the engine back in the car and it didn't run. It didn't run. It took a few days of troubleshooting to realize the PCM wasn't letting the engine get fuel. Turns out that the crankshaft position sensor wasn't getting the proper signal, which is the issue I was never able to sort out. But the engine finally did run with the CPS unplugged. I actually had to remove the engine cover and redo the timing after this, uh, since I messed it up the first time. But after fixing the timing, the engine purred like a kitten. I bled the coolant, changed the oil again, and took the car on its first test drive. And since the crank position sensor was unplugged the entire time, the dash was a Christmas tree. But the car drove for about 10 minutes until when I was pulling back into the driveway, the engine just shut off. And that was the last time it ran. It never ran again. It cranked all day long. I couldn't figure out why it wasn't getting fuel. I tried replacing the camshaft position sensor crankshaft position sensor, disconnecting and reconnecting the battery, checking fuses, they were all fine. Now, the flex plate on the engine was a replacement since I accidentally bent the original one, so I pulled the transmission off to make sure that all looked good, which it did. Um, it only goes on one way, so I don't know. I don't know. To this day, I'm still absolutely perplexed as to why the PCM wouldn't send fuel I spent countless hours on online forums to no avail. The fuel pump was fine, by the way, and there was no mechanical issue with the engine. In the end, it was absolutely infuriating to have successfully rebuilt an engine only to be taken down by some electrical gremlin. A lot of money and time was spent on this car. On top of all the engine parts that were purchased, I bought some cheap catalytic converters which were about 300 bucks since the car didn't have any and of course the previous owner neglected to tell me about that as well. Instead of catalytic converters the exhaust had pieces of pipe held together with the worst welds I had ever seen in my life. I got new rear oxygen sensors to go with the cats and the exhaust needed a Y pipe as well since the old one was cut up and welded on. I actually ended up getting a smoking deal on a stock 370Z Y pipe which flows a little better than my original one. The guy put an ISR Y pipe on his 370 so I bought his stock one for 40 or 60 dollars. I don't remember but it was a good deal nonetheless. I also put on new front wheel bearings since they were completely shot which I found out during that brief 10 minute test drive. So yeah, a lot of time and money was spent on this project only for things to fall apart at the end. In total, I was into the car for about 3500 and ended up selling it to a retired mechanic for 2500 so not too staggering of a loss financially. The whole thing did cost me a lot of time, however, but it was a good learning experience. As I said, sold it to a retired mechanic, told him everything that was up with it and the things I tried. I even bought a more expensive scan tool because of this situation and even that wouldn't tell me anything. But yeah, all this happened last summer, so if he never figured it out, the car has probably been parted out and scrapped by now. But anyway, moral of the story, don't buy junk, especially from sketchy people. <laughs> but that's all for today. As always, I'm grinding. I hope you all are doing the same. You all stay strong, stay healthy, and stay inspired. I'm out. God bless.